Environmental Philosophy Lovers. Today, we are here to talk about the best books in the environmental philosophy sphere. And there are a ton of definitions of environmental philosophy, but we're not going to be using any of the ones from the academics stuck in nuanced arguments in the university system. We are today transcending to the real revolutionaries in the environmental philosophy word, word world. And of course, we have to start off with the GOAT of environmental philosophy, in my opinion. And my name is Ian, and on this channel, we talk about everything book and writing related. And one of the main focuses of this channel is eco-literature, eco-poetry, and environmental literature. So subscribe if you're interested in that. But let's talk about the GOAT himself, Mr. David Abram and his book, The Spell of the, Sen the, Spell of the Sensuous, Perception and Language in a More Than Human World. And Abram was so smart to bring in the nominologists and connecting them with nature and language because... When we look at Husserl, Heidegger, and Ponti, they were just bringing a lot of the ideas from the East, from Taoist, Buddhist, and Hindu tradition, and even Chinese traditions, and updating them to modern philosophy and adding some more arguments. And, and it worked great. We already, you guys know the impact of Heidegger and Ponti and what they did to the postmodernists like Derrida and Deleuze and Foucault. They absolutely loved him and how those three affected society today. So Abram in this book takes a very beautiful approach because of course he goes into the history of the destruction of nature in our mind and then gets into things very deep such as do rocks matter are rocks just inanimate beings do what are the languages of plants and animals and what is their purpose and what is our connection to them and he really from an experienced point of view with a ton of philosophical background connects the most important parts of personal environmentalism because on this 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 channel and this review we're not talking about climate change books because none of that stuff matters when when we have a population ignorant to even the bush outside their house. People who have had no connection with nature, who don't even view na um, the earth as having its own consciousness or being. We can't go very far t until we can show people that feeling because it's a feeling. You can't explain that to someone. People know when they spend enough time in nature, in silence, by themselves, that there is something funky going on out there that has a certain presence, a certain being, and it affects us. And David Abram in The Spell the Sensuous and Becoming Animal really captures that. Becoming Animal is the more practical version of this. So if you're looking for a way to connect with nature and the philosophy for a very personal relationship with nature, he updates it in Becoming Animal. And I have a five hour book review of Becoming Animal on this channel, book breakdown, I should call it. And I'm preparing another one for the spell of the sensuous right now for my free spiritual ecology course, which is on this channel, if you guys are interested in learning more about spiritual ecology. So next I wanna throw to you guys some wild card picks just for fun, because this isn't some serious channel. Soulcraft, Crossing into the mysteries of the nature and psyche by bill plotkin and dune by frank herbert and let's talk about dune by frank herbert too first because dune if you look at it is actually one of the most monumental pieces of literature on environmentalism the dune series has so much to do with the um the ecology of dune the planet arrakis having its own consciousness having its own mind all the characters look i got a dune poster behind me all the characters have a connection with nature and grow from it and it's such an important book because it really awoke uh, excuse me awaken that type of consciousness in the public and that is so important and that's a way to circumvent environmentalism also you write you make songs and you show people through literature and through poetry why the environment matters but let's now talk about soulcraft by bill plotkin this is one of the best books that you can use to get yourself deeper into spiritual ecology and the environment this is like a guide there's a bunch of tips and steps and exercises that you need to do out in nature and for people who have no idea logical minded people the engineers of society or people who just have a connection with nature and want to take it way deeper this is where you need to start and the environment and that, like i said that's when envi environmental philosophy starts with yourself and your connection to the land and at a base level it's really just understanding that the land is sentient and abusive using it for a capitalistic gain is really not a good idea. But on the flip side, environmentalism has also been taken over by the left. The both left and the right love to weaponize the environment for whatever political or financial reason that they need. And they, they, they forget about the environment. They forget about the population that is starting to care less and less about everything, including the environment. And Soulcraft is one of these books that can help draw you back in to the environment. Next on the list, we have Mountain Home, The Wilderness Poetry of Ancient China and Walt by David Hinton and Walden by by Henry David Thoreau. And Walden is such an important book. And Henry David Thoreau is such an important writer in environmental philosophy because he was, you know, he was the original American voice that took environmentalism to the next step. And apparently Thoreau, when he was out there, would just spend hours looking at plants and animals. And he did that his entire life. He was actually very into the environment. He was into that co-creative experience with the environment and seeing it and enjoying it and understanding it. And that is the key essence to life, everybody. Understanding and enjoying those things is what it is about. And the people who understood that most in history 
poetry, though, are the ancient poets in China, the, wil the wilderness and river poetry of China. From really about 500 AD to 1500 AD, when we were stuck in Christianity and the Dark Ages and writing about nothing, and we just finally got out of that, honestly, like 150 years ago, they were writing beautiful nature poetry, Li Po, Cold Mountain, and so many others write poetry that even the best poets in the world today couldn't even match because they don't spend any time in the environment caring about it. So I would recommend this series so much. It will literally show you how good of writers the Chinese poets were. They were Taoist and Buddhist, and they were just out there experiencing the environment. A lot of the time they were statesmen or like involved in the government until they were maybe 40, and then they would wave goodbye or 50 and wave goodbye to the family and live decades out in the woods in a hut, just writing poetry and observing nature. And this created such a beautiful tradition because this was really picked up, you know, by Ezra Pound and the modernists and by Robert Bly and James Wright and a bunch of other thinkers and even up to today with the eco poets. They really have all the all the credit is to the wilderness Chinese poets because they were the first one to really take it to the next level. They were this they were the next stepping stone literally until Ezra Pound. And Pound didn't even do that good of a job. He just helped create a whole new cycle of wilderness and uh, eco poetry. Really we could say Robinson Jeffers, the big Sir Californian poet, he it really was a an empty wasteland and tell him, you know, there were some German poets, there was Holderlin and Novalis and Rilke and some others, but really until Robinson Jeffers, it really didn't take a huge quantum leap. And now we have a ton of great environmental authors, but we also unfortunately have a ton of terrible environmental authors who don't focus on the environment. They even focus on environmental issues instead of focusing on the environment. When you focus on the environment and you spend enough time in nature, you will, the environmental issues will start to crop up. Like for instance, I live an hour and a half away from where all the nuclear testing goes on. You know, all the underground nuclear testing, the ones that went above ground in Nevada, that is a huge problem. All you have to do is go out there and you start to feel it. You start to realize it. You see drones flying over you and it's like, it's there. The radiation is there. So now I want to talk about two big movements in the ecology field. And they are the spiritual ecology movement, which we kind of talked about with Abram, and then the or deep the deep ecology, and then there's social, so, excuse me, social ecology. And the champion of social ecology is a guy named Murray Book Bookchin. And his book, The Ecology of Freedom, is pretty good. There's some other ones talking about the philosophy. There's one, another one called The Philosophy of Social Ecology, which are really good. But I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up Bookchin because he wrote a great essay. All you have to do is type in um, on Google, Deep Ecology Refutation, Murray Bookchin. And he wrote a great analysis of the spiritual ecology movement, the deep ecology movement, and why it's a waste, why they're not making any changes and why it has to really go through the government and through policy and through a social movement instead of just on this personal level like I've been talking about. And Bookchin really creates some really good points and writes in a really dynamic and good way. And I don't think he has that deep of connection to ecology at all. He's not this guy that's living out there. He's a professor. He's It's a really good take though, in terms of like the long-term health of the ecology and how social movements can bring about it. And you know, there's a lot of people doing it now but like I said, the whole movement has honestly just been co-opted. Every single environmental package you see is like loaded with a bunch of other stuff that has nothing to do with the environment or is punishing certain industries. It's all, there's always something going on, but maybe that's just politics today and to get environmental change, we have to make a bunch of other changes too. But the really the head or one of the leaders of the deep ecology movement is um, Arnis Neis. I, I can't say his name. I think he's Scandinavian. And his main book is a compilation of his writings is in the ecology of wisdom. And you know, it's not as good honestly as David Abram or some others, but it's a classic classic book on deep ecology and really kicked off the deep ecology movement. So last but not least, I really recommend that everyone in here go check out the Carlos Castaneda, Carlos Castaneda series, the Don Juan series. And Carlos Castaneda made this all up, most likely, but the way he interacts with the environment and becomes one with the environment in these uh, narrative fiction or nonfiction tales, or whatever, anthropological tales, whatever you want to believe, are wonderful. And it's an absolute mind-bending experience reading through the Carlos Castaneda series, especially if you've never read them before. It changes your outlook. It changes your life. It helps you become the warrior and that's what it's all about becoming a warrior for the environment for life by being in nature by walking the walk and that's what's about that's what it's about that's why i hate the whole environmental movement now is that they're trying to make big changes but a lot of these people don't walk the walk with the environment they're not in tune with it they still believe in like things like hierarchy and all these other things that don't have any occult or magical connection to the environment and i guess you don't need that but once again if you spend enough time out there it's going to happen and you never hear about that anymore and that's why i know what things are problematic with the movement that's not the main thing and that is the only thing the phenomenological moments with nature that we are missing out on by either being stuck in suburbs or just absolutely destroying the environment so if you guys want i'm going to lead you guys over here to my big book review on becoming animal by david abram it's a big book review but you guys will learn a lot about the spiritual ecology movement and it's a part of my spiritual ecology course if you guys want to join that peace